You know, I'm feeling like shit right now, and whenever I feel like shit, there's one thing I like to do to make myself feel better. Look at whatever the fuck VM's up to. If you don't know VM, he's a rapper. Well, kind of, more like an Instagram clown who raps here and there. And he has an insane story, like literally one of the craziest stories I've ever heard in my life. Filled with drug use, stealing, unfortunate face tattoos, clout antics, and some all around just bad shit. So without further ado, let's look into the life and story of VM. Romeo Arsario was born in 1996 in South America, spending his early childhood there before his family immigrated to Virginia. He spent his younger years skateboarding and recording videos of his friends also skateboarding. His childhood seems pretty average and even decent at that, there's no really notable moments moments that we know of that led him to become who he is today and even at that he seemed to be kind of smart because he was able to start editing and putting out YouTube videos at only the age of 11 and they were actually pretty advanced for his age. And that wasn't his only skill either as he actually started to rap in his teen years dropping his first song called Slim Danky with an accompanying music video shot and edited by him at a local skate park. Well the video took place at a local skate park he didn't edit the video at the local skate park or maybe he did I don't know what his living situation was. For a first song it actually wasn't bad but unfortunately over time, Romeo's rapping talent would deteriorate and he began taking drugs like Xanax in his late teen years, so that definitely didn't help either. But somehow, he still managed to graduate high school in 2014 and get a full-time job working at a warehouse. However, this wasn't enough for a young BM, as he saw himself as more than just a simple wage slave. He wanted to be a star, the life of glitz and glamour, he wanted the chains, he wanted the watches, and he wanted everything that came along with that lifestyle. So of course, just like every other rapper around the time, he started a SoundCloud account. He began to rap under the name Big Shroom and immediately began to buy features from bigger artists like Space Coast Perp, Famous Dex, and Peso Peso. And I bet you're wondering how he paid for all these features. Well, it turns out he actually sells THC vapes online. He buys them in a legal state in bulk, separates them out, and then sells them to states where THC is illegal. And uh, that's how he makes his money. Not a bad side hustle, and his rap career wasn't going so bad either. But unfortunately, he did end up having a bit of a dispute with Peso Peso. After they dropped a song together, Peso wouldn't promote it, and that would lead VM to get upset and diss him on Instagram Live, before immediately walking his statement back the very next day after Peso had a less than friendly chat with him in the DMs. So this is a public service announcement. I would like to apologize to Peso Peso and his manager for the way I acted. You feel me? Brody was locked up. I didn't really know what was going on. I got a little upset because my video wasn't being promoted. You feel me? It was a miscommunication. Peso says he was in jail at the time. That's why he didn't promote it. I think he was actually just too embarrassed to promote the song. And could any of us really blame him? VM went on to drop a video for his song, I Live in LA, which he calls his blow up moment. But the song only really has 30K views. And don't get me wrong, that's pretty good views. I'd love to have 30K views. But for a song, it's not really blow up level. He'd also pay the Island Boys to appear as features on a couple of his songs, even flying them out so they could be in the music videos as well. But before these tracks ever got the chance to drop, they got in a random ass Instagram live beef and it never ended up happening. Truly a shame, I think the world's a whole lot worse of a place because these songs never got a chance to come out, they definitely would have been the song of the summer. He also managed to get one of his tracks on No Jumper, which didn't really help his career at all but is still worth noting. After this, BM would really move to LA and begin couch hopping, hanging out with local gangsters, which wasn't a good idea because they ended up stealing his gun, pistol whipping him and robbing him. And then they took a victory lap appearing on his live stream to mock him even further. Got your <laughs> gun bro, I pistol whipped you with your own gun bro. I pistol. <laughs> I'll tell you how it is. You making up stories, you a straight pussy ass bitch ass nigga. Listen, gang. I just gave you my addy, you a snake. I swear all these clout chasing rappers always try to pull the 6 9 and hang out with gangsters and it just never works out for them. Don't do this. This is VM we're talking about. He couldn't let something small like this stop him from blowing up because right after this, he would start to hunt down Johnny Dang to make a video with him, which he actually did accomplish just through pure persistence. He ended up setting a payment plan up to get 30k worth of jewelry and this video got another 30k views, which drew the attention of the Island Boys once again. At this point, the two of them had actually blown up, got big, and had started to fade, and they were trying to find a fifth island boy. This is when VM would come into the picture and they would start to communicate with him over Instagram Live, eventually growing their relationship to the point VM became a full-on member. With becoming a member of such a prestigious group, you know that VM had to get something that had the class and style to match the island boys, so he got a dumbass palm tree and tattooed in the middle of his forehead. And of course, just like all his other features, he had to pay to be a part of the island boys. This new career path got him to finally move out of LA and go to Florida to live with the boys full time. But before he left, he couldn't leave without a parting gift. So he beat his girlfriend up and wrote a sappy love song about it just before he hit the road. She broke my heart just like a pill. She broke my heart. So how you think that made me feel? 
classy. And after that, he went on to make TikToks with the Island Boys for three straight months, leeching all the clout he could possibly drink until it came all crashing down when they found out he was actually talking to minors in a sexual manner for fuck's sake. Here right now, Zoom 6K, follow me on IG. Hey, shorty in the back, Sh D no. follow me right now. The girl in the back, no. follow me right no, now. No, she's not gonna follow you. Pass her the she phone. No, no. Pass her no. the phone. I'm the same she like 13, I don't know, what the fuck? I was what is it with SoundCloud rappers and not being able to stay away from children? Like seriously, why is this a trend? And even worse than that, he actually committed a more despicable crime, getting in a fight with Fly Soldier over $20. Yeah, it turns out they used to play this wheel game on Instagram Live where their viewers could pay $5 to get their name on a wheel, and if they won, they got $20 back, and VM and Fly would pocket all the rest of the money. On one fateful day, VM decided to take all the money for himself, not paying Fly Soldier back a single dollar. And that was the last straw for Fly Soldier. Where is the Fifth Island boy? I don't know why people keep asking me the same question. If you don't see them, then they're not around. And I'll put it basically just like this. There's only a limited people that's going to be around me and my brother. And we're the ones that created Island Boy. We're the original Island Boys. Okay? So you guys better show love to our way, not anybody else's way. We're the creators. And on top of talking to minors in the DMs, VM also took it upon himself to harass some in real life minors while on vacation in Hawaii with the Island Boys. And things would only get worse from there for VM because after that he would actually get his chain snatched before getting arrested and locked up for a week's time. After that, a video would leak of him allegedly showing his dick to a 12 year old boy. There were some claim he didn't actually do this and it was actually a prior recorded video that someone else showed to the little boy, but either way it's a really weird situation. After the fallout with the Island Boys, he was forced to move back into his family's trailer park. And this is when a channel known as Famous Criminals began to make videos talking about VM's many fuck-ups throughout his career. Of course, he didn't really like this very much, so he began to take to his own Instagram to say that he was going to take down any video that was talking bad about him on YouTube. Keep it all the way at that wow. There's this one YouTube account called Famous Criminals. I'm not gonna tag his Instagram. Uh, he's getting dummy clout. Famous Criminals, first of all, don't incriminate me. You're making up all these rumors about me. Go take his YouTube down. And lucky for me, I'm too small for him to ever notice me, so we're good guys. For the next couple months, he continued to do TikToks with his family. It seems like he was really feeling some type of way about the whole Island Boy situation though, because in July of 2022, he paid to get himself on the No Jumper podcast. Sitting down with Adam22 to shit talk the Island Boys for an hour straight, calling them gay, weirdos, and attempting to rewrite history to make himself look better, giving him another five minutes of fame before fading into irrelevancy once again. In January, 2023 VM would get arrested once again for jumping a man while he was walking his dog. Apparently the guy owed his brother money so the two of them decided to beat his ass and then post the video on Instagram. He owed him like five dollars by the way. In the courts after the man went to the police to complain he got assaulted by two men they would check VM's Instagram page see that he posted photographic proof of him committing a crime and scooped him up later that day. VM's girlfriend would immediately take to her own Instagram to post a video of VM on a jail call telling his loyal followers that he was in trouble and he needed their help to raise money for a good lawyer. Everybody, this is Vium. Right now, I'm currently detained, locked up for charges I did not commit in Fairfax County. Uh, shout out to all my supporters. If you guys could all help out so that I could get a really good lawyer. Alice is gonna make a goal fund me. Of course, VM has no fans, so nobody gave him any money, and worse than that, once he was in custody, the state began to hit him with several more charges and outstanding warrants. Turns out there was an outstanding warrant for when he hit his girlfriend back in 2018, but instead of facing the charge, he decided to leave LA at the time and go to Florida, and because of that, he never ended up going to trial. And it turns out he also tried to buy a gun as a felon, lying on his background screening about having any prior offenses, and once cops found that out, they put another warrant out for his arrest, but once again, VM just left the state. you think that would be it for charges, but no, of course not. This is VM, and he also had another charge because he was talking to little kids in the DMs when he was with the Island Boys. And since he had decided to flee the state those two other times, he was denied bond, making sure that he would remain locked up. And in all seriousness, the kid stuff is not funny. I'm just trying to make this more lighthearted, but seriously, that's fucked up. And if that's not enough, he also got three more charges for assaulting the dog walker. One malicious wound charge, one assault charge, and one abduction charge for pushing the dog walker into a car to give him a proper skinny from the nine beatdown. With all those charges stacked up together, he could land himself seven to 24 years in prison with a possibility of deportation back to South America. As it turns out, he's actually an illegal immigrant. You think that would be all for the story of VM, but somehow he actually ended up getting out of jail until his trial date in March of 2023. But instead of showing up, VM decided to go on the run and skip out on court again. This guy never learns, but seriously. Stay out long though, because a few days later, his girlfriend was pulled over on a suspended license. 
license. And when the cops noticed BM in the passenger seat, they would ask him for his license as well, which he legally didn't even have to give them, but this is BM, so of course he's gonna get himself in more trouble. So what did he do in this situation, I hear you ask? Did he do the smart thing and just lay low and deny giving them his license? No, of course, he started to film the police, shit talking them the entire time. Bro, I'm standing in front of you guys, the police know, guys, make sure this is screen recorded. You told me at first that you didn't have to search my bag, so you trick it. You're tricking me now, okay, so telling me after the whole, you need to further your investigation. Now I'm telling you, you, you can check my bags real quick in front of me, in front of me. You can check my personal belongings, sir. I do not want to do a lawsuit. I'm leading him to once again be detained, but somehow this man's luck never runs out because he only had to spend one night in jail and was released the very next day after paying a $2,000 fine. But guess what? No, really, guess what? You probably won't be able to guess it. He got arrested again, and this time it was because he was selling fentanyl. So it turns out his prior charges ended up landing him a 12 month suspended sentence, meaning that if he just kept his nose clean, he could actually avoid jail time. But after he got hit with his drug charge, he had to go to court again. When VM found out that he actually had to go back to court he decided to flee the courthouse only to be tackled by police officers immediately after exiting the front door landing him another charge for fleeing law enforcement and somehow at the time of recording vm is still a free man i really don't know why they keep letting him out like he clearly just doesn't give a fuck about staying out of trouble but if fucking chris chan can get out then i guess anyone can so shout out to vm of course i'm a really big fan of this guy and i'm hoping he'll give me an interview so i can be somewhere near as prolific and successful as him i hear you asking what is the moral of this story well quit your job get some face tattoos and do as much crime as you want because the justice system will probably let you off anyways so thank you guys so much for watching shout out knife gang follow me on instagram join my discord server subscribe if you're really cool because we're almost to 3,000. and most of all guys as always thank you so much for watching bye